Dus papa Alfa 0, Eco Tingo, Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag. Dus het bulletin van zondag. Today's bulletin, as always, on Sundays will be in English. We do have Morse code today, and right after that we have an SSTV image in PD50, which is decodable with your smartphone using Robot36 app on Android or CQ SSTV on iOS. This is GB2RS, the news broadcasting service of the Radio Society of Great Britain. Now for the DX News compiled from 425DX News and other sources. Merv M6NO is using the call sign VK9OL. Whilst working from Lord Howe Island, which is OC004, he'll be there until the 29th. He's using mostly CW and focusing on the walks bands QSL to N6NO. John AI6Y will be on the air as E51XYZ from Rarotonga Island, OC013, from the 23rd to the 28th of May. Activity will be 10 to 40 metre bands, QSL via operator's instruction. Frank VK3ADT is also on the air as E51ADT from Rarotonga until the 27th, QSL home call. Ollie OH0XX will be on the air as PZ50X in Suriname until the 1st of June. Activity will be 160 to 10 metre bands, mostly CW, QSL direct to home call. Lucky HA0HW will be on the air as Sugar Whiskey 8 Whiskey Whiskey from Thassos Island, IOTA EU174. From the 26th of May to the 6th of June, activity 42 metres to 6 metre bands using CW, SSB and RITI. This includes an entry in the CQ Worldwide WPXCW contest as a single op all band entry. QSL home call. Randy WW6RG will be transmitting as VQ9RA from San Diego Garcia. IOTA AF006 from the 25th to the 30th of May. Activity on all the HF bands. QSL to home call. From the headquarters of the American Radio Relay League in Newington, Connecticut, this is ARRL Audio News. The crew of a sailing vessel that foundered on a reef in the South Pacific in early May was rescued thanks in part to Maritime Mobile Service Network member Russell Taylor, AI6GV of San Marcos, California. On May 3rd, Taylor monitored a May Day call on 14.3 MHz from the Alaska-based catch Morning Dove, which was some 200 miles northeast of French Polynesia. The vessel's captain, Bruce Maroney, KL3RK, reported that the 46-foot catch had become stuck on a reef and was unable to move. The crew transmitted the May Day distress call after the vessel began taking on water. Maroney activated an emergency position indicating radio beacon and put out a May Day call after the catch's hull and diesel fuel tank breached. The craft's radios were underwater just 15 minutes later. Taylor apprised the U.S. Coast Guard of the situation and the vessel's position. The French Navy subsequently dispatched a helicopter to the area within six hours of the incident, airlifting the four unharmed crew members to safety. Efforts were reported underway to retrieve the grounded vessel. The Coast Guard later called Taylor to tell him that had he not monitored the May Day call, the consequences could have been devastating for the crew. Assisting in the event were longtime NET member William Sturridge, KI4MMZ in Florida, and Peter Mott, ZL1PWM, in New Zealand, who relayed information. You're listening to ARRL Audio News. Now with this week's satellite update, here's Bruce Page, KK5DO. From the AMSAT News Service comes this week's story, the CY9C de-expedition to St. Paul Island, scheduled for August 19th through the 29th of this year, has announced that Lee, WW2DX, has joined the de-expedition team and will add satellite operations as well as 2-meter EME and 6-meter operations to the de-expedition plans. St. Paul Island is located in Grid Square, Fox November 97 in the Cabot Strait between Cape Breton Island, Nova Scotia, and Cape Ray, Newfoundland. And is a separate entity on the ARRL DXCC list. It also counts as a country for the AMSAT Oscar Satellite Communications Achievement Award, the AMSAT Oscar Sexgesimal Award, and the AMSAT Oscar Century Award. Most of Europe and North America should be easily workable from this location. St. Paul Island has not been activated on satellite since July 1998. 
If you're going to apply for one of the AMSAT awards, those requests are sent to me. I am the Director of Contests and Awards for AMSAT, as well as the AWRL Audio News Satellite Update Guy. This is Bruce Page, KK5DO, for the AWRL Audio News. Students at St. Thomas More Cathedral School in Arlington, Virginia, erupted in a frenzy of celebration on May 16th as their kit-built STM Sat-1 CubeSat was deployed from the International Space Station at 1440 UTC. The satellite is the first to be designed and built by grade schoolers who were supported by NASA technical advisors and by local radio amateurs. STM Sat 1 was transported to the International Space Station in December by an orbital ATK Cygnus spacecraft. NASA's Technology Demonstration Office provided the school with a mobile clean room to ensure that the construction phase met strict guidelines and standards for launch and deployment from the International Space Station. NASA also provided the school with a ground station antenna to receive the slow scan TV images and temperature readings once the satellite comes to life. The CubeSat's slow-scan TV payload will transmit on 437.8 MHz FM. According to a tweet from the school this week, the satellite will start transmitting when its orbit is stable, the transmitter has power, and its antennas are deployed. From Australia, this is VK1WIA. Smart Clothes Peg makes drying your clothes a breeze. The humble clothes peg, you know, the fastener used to hang up clothes for drying, usually on a clothesline. Well, it's been brought into the modern age with a smart clothes peg. Inside the orange-coloured smart peg is a thermometer, UV sensor and humidity detector. These track the weather and impending rain to alert you via your smartphone and Wi-Fi. The smart peg aims to avoid soggy washing on the line that needs expensive indoor drying. It seems that many things will eventually be caught up in the Internet of Things revolution. Daily Minutes zijn dagelijks om 1900 uur te beluisteren op PI2 NOS en ochtends om half elf. Ken jij het internet der dingen? Ja, daar ga je mooi van zingen. Ha. Dat is dat ze alles aan elkaar koppelen. Oké. Okay. Dat je bijvoorbeeld naar de slager gaat en dat ze de koep slachten als jij de parkeerplaats oprijdt om een biefstuk te kopen. Maar hoe weten ze dat dan van die biefstuk? Nou, ze weten zoveel over je dat ze al weten dat je een biefstuk wilt voordat jij dat hebt besloten. Volgens psychologen is het feit dat je in staat bent om zelf vrije beslissingen te nemen een van de grootste misvattingen van de 21ste eeuw. Nou, voor mij is dat meer het internet dat stinks.